my workshop. What I'm going to do today too is to show you how accurate these machines are. So I'm going to set up the work offset, the zero point of the work. Um, and I'm also going to put a, a DTI gauge uh, on the gantry, or on the, uh, actually on the right ahead, uh, and show you that it will move precisely to within, within a, approximately a thousandth of an inch. Uh, so these machines can be very accurate. A lot of you have asked me how I've operated this machine. Well, I will tell you that uh, I've completely rewired it because the wiring in these machines, uh, because it constantly moves back and forth, uh, it fractures and breaks uh, because the quality of cabling from the majority of manufacturers uh, is just not there. So I've completely uh, rewired it. I have uh, new uh, drivers, I have uh, new stepper motors, and indeed I replaced uh, the, the ball screws in all three axes. Uh, there is a, a couple of videos that I've done uh, about three, two years ago, I think, uh, which um, shows you me doing these sort of things. So if you look through my list of videos, you, you'll come across some of them. So basically, the machine that I originally purchased, really just the bed and the gantry uh, and the framework uh, is the only thing that really exists uh, from the original machine. Everything has been upgraded, even all the, uh, uh, the bearing races as well uh, in the uh, X, Y and Z axes have all been replaced with better ones. I've been receiving a lot of emails uh, through my YouTube channel and through my, my company um, because uh, I announced a month or so ago that uh, I'm actually uh, producing these machines uh, to a higher level uh, myself from uh, a factory in China that we've just newly opened. Um, and if you go to my YouTube channel or just search for uh, video number uh, 143, 144, 145 and 146, that, I show you exactly what goes into our machines. So please, go and have a look and um, see what you think. So we're going to now um, start the process of setting up to cut a three-dimensional uh, picture, which uh, in, in fact is uh, 500 millimeters long uh, and 250 uh, in, in height, in Y, and it's uh, it's in an 18 mil sheet of um, MDF. But the picture itself is 15 millimeters in depth, the three dimensional depth of the picture, the, the cut. Um, so we're, we're left with a, a a good solid uh, back or backing. Uh, the way I'm going to cut this is uh, there's a little bit of wasted wastage of material on the top, uh, but I'm going to have a a 50 millimeter or two inch border all the way around. So I'm cutting a 3D picture with the frame as well. So here we go, and I, I hope you like it. I operate NC Studio uh, and Mag 3 actually uh, off a radio uh, keypad uh, and it works very well. I've also got a pendant as well uh, which I don't use very often. Um, I don't know why. But to enable the gantry to come up all the way up here now and I've marked on here where the start of the program is and in this case with this picture it's uh, this uh, bottom left hand corner. You move the gantry and the head uh, in X, Y and Z direction by the arrow keys uh, on the, the keypad here and the Z axis is operated by 9 which is page up which takes the Z axis up and 1 
which takes the Z axis down. That's the only difference between Mac 3 and NC Studio, it's one of the only differences. Um, another one is the uh, rapid feed, or, uh, rapid jog feed. So in Mac 3 you press the shift a button and then your arrow, uh, but in NC Studio uh, you, you press the CTI, CTRI rather. So um, here's the difference. So, so we're going to bring the gantry up towards us now. That's normal jog, which is oh, probably somewhere in the region of about um, 20 mm, about three quarters of an inch a second. Well, you can make that very much faster by pressing that. It's about four times faster. So just by using uh, the, these, you can you can get it within a, a millimeter or so. And I just to, to get the X and Y, I just use a very very pointy tool. And what I'll do is uh, I'll put the camera now down on the end of the tool so you can see what's happening. Okay, so that's uh, as close as I need to be to get to my X, Y coordinates. And the next thing now is to zero it uh, into NC Studio. Okay, that is simply done. Uh, I'll just explain um, that there's two rows of figures here. Now this is the machine coordinate, or rather this is the home position, or how far the machine is from the home position, uh, and this is the actual uh, position which we're uh, going to zero now. This is the going to be the tool offset, so this is the left over from the preceding job to this. So what we do, we get the cursor and go, uh, we're just doing the X and Y at the moment, X0, zero, Y0, zero. Uh, because we're going to change the tool now to a 6mm ball mill and uh, we're going to um, zero the tool. Okay, so now we... So now we bring the Z down. close there, put this underneath. So now I've altered the jog, I'll just swing you around and show you that. Okay, if you notice here I've altered the jog now so it goes 0 0.1 of a millimeter every time I press the key. So that's pretty, a pretty slow rate. So now We'll get a bit of paper and just move it until it grabs it. There you go. I'll just swing you back and show you what I do. A bit of a storm happening out there, I think. Okay, so what we do then is come up to here on the Z and zero the Z. So now the, the, the three axes are zeroed. Right also, this is the setup I have at the moment. This is a DTI gauge or dial test indicator. Now this is a very, very accurate, precise measuring tool. Um, one revolution of this little needle represents one millimeter. So each uh, little uh, segment here is a one hundredth part of a, a millimeter, which is a very, very small amount. In actual fact, it works out to be somewhere in the region of about half a thousandth of an inch, I think. So I've explained that. Now here, I have NC Studio set at one millimeter of jog per 
press of the uh, X direction there. So what I'm going to do is zoom in so you can see the needle there. Now I'm going to press, um, it's going to come this way, one millimeter. That's one millimeter and it's only one hundredth of a millimeter out. So it's about half a thou out. And it's just, and that's bang on to where it was. Um, again, another millimeter. Again, another milli millimeter. It is so close to being perfect that you really. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you <laughs> what can I say? It's pretty well perfect. Um, I mean, for cutting wood or aluminium or plastic or anything like that, it is perfect. But be advised, the standard machine that you purchase from wherever is not going to do that. These are not standard ball screws, uh, so what I'm saying to you is don't expect that type of accuracy from a machine that you buy off eBay because you won't get it <laughs> so I just thought I'd show you that so you have a full understanding of now how accurate this machine has been made to be